Hey there, secret. Hello again. So this is going to be your lunar phase um, forecast for the Scorpio moon cycle. Okay, so for sunrise, sun, uh, for the new moon, <laughs> new moon, and the full moon um, that's happening during Scorpio season. So let me get to sharing this then now. Let's share this and let's get going. I'm gonna do it this way so I can really see the full. Okay, I'm not sure how this is showing up. There we go. All right, so I'm not gonna draw on this one. I'm just gonna kind of let it be what it is. I wanted to be sure it was like, Full, showing full on, okay? Um, on the inside here, we've got, these are your natal planets. And then on the outside, we've got the transiting planets as of and other spots or other um, notable points in the sky, in the heavens um, during the new moon. So this is the first part that we're doing is the new moon. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit. And then over here on the side here, I've got your, um, the actual chart. So I don't kind of need to draw on it. I'm going to, let's start off with your sun, which is right here. Um, so, Hang on, I'm just kind of getting my orientation. So here we've got Scorpio. So we've got the sun in Scorpio. We'll start out with the transiting sun. The sun in Scorpio. Um, the sun in Scorpio is conjuncting your north node. So you're probably, it's going to be a, a lot of focus in this new moon about the evolution to which you are meant to grow which means it's opposing your south node in Uranus, right? Where you were in Taurus, excuse me, where you're needing to come from. Um, and that also means that Uranus is then opposing your nor north node. So even though the focus is gonna be a lot on where you need to get to, and then we talked a lot about that in your natal chart. Um, so it's kind of highlighted, yet the changes with Uranus um, opposing your north node while it is in Taurus means that the sudden changes, they're going to be they're probably going to feel very necessary, right? These changes are going to be dramatic, revolutionary, freeing. They're going to be necessary, but they may not be exactly the way that you wanted them to be. And we kind of touched on that a little bit in the last video. Um, da, 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 da. Really, um, the sun, your, the transiting sun, Although it is conjunct your Uranus, you can see that down at the bottom line here, that the, the, the transiting sun is actually conjuncting your Uranus. So while this is like brrr, freeing, and that's another reason why I really feel like any sudden change that's happening during this, new, this lunar cycle, it's going to be abrupt, but it's go you're going to know that it's necessary. You're going to know that it's freeing. It's going to be like, oh, this is so liberating right now. I'm finally like able to make this change. Even though it's uncomfortable, it's still gonna feel very necessary. Um, it felt very liberating, very freeing. So what I would focus on primarily during this new moon, because again, the, um, new moon is really what is um what we need to look at and what we need to but it's kind of devoid of um feeling okay it's devoid of 
like you can look at it without the emotion. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of like picking, picking some, cause some of these transits are a little bit off um, from what I would, where I would like to see it. Um, I'm just kind of looking at your moon too. Your moon. Well, let's go back to the, just the sun. So that's not, I mean, it's a major um, conjunction there. It's a major transition, but I'm not going to say that it's going to be like, it's un going to be uncomfortable because your Uranus is opposing your Uranus. So there could be a little bit of kind of infighting there. Um, but I would really focus on just allowing the freedom to happen, allowing the liberation to happen and just know that the, the universe has your back and this is meant to happen now. Um, and allow yourself to really feel free, okay? Um, your Mercury, we're gonna go up this chart here. Your Mercury is sextiling the transiting Mercury. Um, so your Mercury, where's yours, is right here in Scorpio. And by the time this new moon happens, it's gonna be sextiling Mercury over here, excuse me, your Mercury, Mercury, that's, yeah, that's it. Um, your Mercury here in Virgo is sextiling Mercury in Scorpio. So the communication, while you communicate on a very um, earthy, mothering, um, very grounded basis, by sextiling the um, transiting Mercury, so you're going to be able to have that communication on very deep levels, on very secretive levels, like the things that people really might not want to see or acknowledge. Um, you're going to be able to see it pretty easily. You're going to be able to communicate it very easily and it's going to be very accepted during this new moon. So I would really also focus on how can I communicate? How can I present myself and present the messages that I've been given to give um, from spirit in a very grounded way, but yet get to people's innermost, you know, thought, uh, fears, innermost desires, um, the things that they know they need to transform, but they just can't seem to figure out how, like you're going to be able to communicate that well, um, continued. And I do see some continued growth. Your uh, Venus is going to be um, so Venus, the natal Venus, I mean, excuse me, the transiting Venus is also sextiling your natal Mercury. So, um, I do see money. So if there are areas where you've sought to, um, expand in abundance monetarily, and again, um, in that natal chart, I talked about how I could you know, in the upcoming month, you know, this season, this is probably a good time where you may see some love interest pop up. Ooh. You just might see some love interest pop up. This is going to be a good time for um, the, the earning money um, and abundance in the way that you're passionate. This is a great time for that to happen for you. And, you know, a new love interest. I'm really feeling that very strongly. Um, the transiting Saturn, transiting Saturn up here in Capricorn is squaring. We see this here, your birth sun right here in Libra. Um, and I'm going to also call Pluto because they're so close um, together in, um, in degrees. I mean, they're only five, well, they're just outside the aspects. So you're probably not gonna feel it as much. But because we have um, Saturn kind of um, squaring your, your sun, uh, that's gonna also squaring your natal moon over here in Aries, 
there's gonna feel there's gonna be this sense of restriction as well. So this is a very interesting new moon for you because those areas that right now you've felt the most restricted in and you feel like because the sun is squaring Saturn and it's gonna your sun is your natal sun is gonna be squaring Saturn for a hot second, um, as well as your natal moon. Um, the very things that you want to change and the very things you want to break free from with this Uranus energy, um, you're going to feel very restricted in. So this is going to be an interesting battle as to what's going to win out. Is it going to be the transiting Saturn, the teacher, the lessons, some of the harsh lessons maybe we needed to learn? Is that going to win out? Or is your absolute desire to and motivation for freedom going to win out? And only you can make that decision. Like, are you going to get comfy with the changes and really uh, and not fall back into the restriction and feel that you cannot break out of this? I don't want to call it a rut, but that is kind of the first thing that came to my mind. Like, are you going to break out of this rut? Are you going to break out of this, what everybody else expects for you to be? and really branch out into what you really want deep down. Because remember that, that Uranus in your Scorpio says, you've got a deep desire to have freedom of expression, freedom of movement, um, to revolutionize certain things. You've got a deep desire for that revolutionary aspect in life. So are you gonna finally break free and allow yourself to really revolutionize in a deep, dark, and from the base of who you are, um, are you going to allow yourself to really revolutionize? Or are you still going to be stuck being what everybody else expects for you to be with this Saturn energy up here in Capricorn? Interesting. Um, Pluto is up there in Capricorn as well, although it's just outside of some nodal aspects. Um, I do feel like that Pluto at eight degrees Capricorn is actually, um, sextiling your natal Uranus at six degrees in Scorpio. So that's going to give you some really awesome transformative relief. That's going to give you some trans, although the, it's going to, It is okay for you to make the changes. It is okay for you to make these updates to who you are and how you present yourself in a very loving fashion. They're not going to be as grand as you may want them to be and as radical as you may want them to be. Because the, the Capricornian energy is restricting the amount of transformation. However, there is space for you to make some transformation. There is space for you to make some revolution. There is space for you to make some changes and feel very good about it. So you may want to like, like maybe reinvigorate or, re, or change up an entire area, right, of what you do and how you do it. Um, but it might just be too much for right now. What's behind me? Oh, that's the sunlight. Um, but it might just be a little bit much for right now. So it's okay. Let it be that. Um, and just feel free enough to make some changes. Okay? Um, in a loving, transformative fashion. It might not be as grand as you would like, but you will find some relief and will be able to break out somewhat. All right? Um... Where's Jupiter? Yeah, Jupiter is transiting. Yeah, Jupiter's kind of gone out of, out of it. You're going to start feeling, though, I will say, by the time this cycle is over, and we'll probably see that on the full moon, that Mercury is really going to be transiting your Neptune and Sagittarius. That is going to give you, again, some more relief. That's going to really give you some more relief in being able to take the dreams and expand them. Um, so I, we have that to look forward to. Um, 
We talked about Saturn squaring your moon. We talked about Uranus opposing your Uranus. Neptune is trining your Venus, which is really, um, where's my Neptune up here? Neptune in Pisces is trining your Venus in Scorpio. Um, so again, your Venus is right here. So it's trining that. Um, I like that too, um, because uh, the dreaminess and expansion, the daydreaming, the um, deeper, I, I wouldn't be surprised if during this lunar cycle as well, you begin to find yourself and you've probably been finding yourself lately because Neptune's been in Pisces for quite some time and it'll be there for a while longer. Um, as it is trining your Venus, you're probably able to really dig deeper or uh, finding yourself open more spiritually um, more deep insights in your readings. You're probably finding yourself really super able to like, um, you're getting more messages. You're, you're wanting to investigate other areas of spirituality, um, wanting to really get to know other areas, um, um, expand uh, your spiritual gifts and the utilization of them um, in a very loving, kind fashion that's very foundational for you. Uh, I, and, and, and a lot of that's changing because your Venus is in a fixed, um, because your Venus is in a fixed water sign. There's again, this transformative, how you feel about relationships, how you feel about how to, on a career level, make money, um, um, you're probably wanting to take trips or like do something just extravagant. Uh, the Saturn opposing or squaring is going to keep you from squaring your Venus is going to keep you from doing that on a grand scale. Um, but you know, you'll probably do it. Um, it you'll, uh, but the transiting Saturn, excuse me, sextiling your Venus is going to give you a little bit more room to do that. But your natal, your natal Venus actually sextiles your one, two, three. Nope, it squares your natal. So you're going to fi find this push-pull at the end of the day. You're going to find a push-pull of, yeah, I want to do this, but I don't. Yeah, I want it. So, but I really see it more so in your spirituality and those gifts growing in a big way. That's what I see. And so if you're feeling that, um, that's why. Um, I do want to also talk about the fact that um, the birth, the um, transiting Mars is conjuncting your sun. So you're going to have a lot of passion and energy about those things you feel passionate about. So it, you're going to have the energy to do a lot of these things. And it's sextiling the tra Mars, the transiting Mars is sextiling your um, birth Saturn. Again, this is a big expansion, change, transformation, um, especially in the spiritual realm, and then how you conduct things in your personal life, um, habits, um, money, career. You're going to really have the passion to manifest those things during this lunar cycle. And I would not be surprised if you yourself feel a huge leveling up. So during the new moon, which starts of court, which is tomorrow, I would, on Monday, I would definitely, definitely, definitely um, do some meditation about where do you see yourself spiritually? Because you do have a spiritual, um, you know, practice, right? You do have a spiritual entrepreneurship business, you know, so where do you see that going over the next year, two years, three years, five years? Um, where do you really passionately want to break free and do something different? Um, you know, expand it. Um, where do you see, where, what spiritual gifts is it that you really want to focus on um, that you felt passionate about and that you feel that really could break out, but you just don't have quite the energy yet? Like you just like, this now's the time. 
Now's the time to break bad. Now's the time to get out of the nest. Now's the time to really launch and, and get free. You know, stop allowing what everybody else thinks you should do. Dictate what you do. This is your time to break free. Focus in on manifesting that. And if you so choose, manifest some love. So let's look at the, the full moon, the manifestation moon. As we see here, the moon here is opposing the sun, right? So your, uh, it, as we come into the full moon in a couple of weeks in, on November 12th, I believe it is, um, you're going to find that your moon is transiting your natal moon. It's, you're going to be feeling, it's going to be transiting Chiron. It's so here we go. The full moon is really when we're going to get to break bad. Of course, Neptune is still training your, this Neptune transiting Neptune, trining your, um, natal Venus. Love what this love, the uh, beauty of what's happening here that you're able to mutate that you're being mutable in your spirituality, really own this for a while own this and Neptune's retrograde. Um, so it's going to be a lot of that internal stuff. So own it. Transiting Uranus. Um, still in opposition to your natal Uranus. That's going to be that way for a minute, especially while Uranus is in retrograde. So again, this like pull, like I've got to do this. I got to do this. It's shining the light on them. I got to do this. I got to make these changes. Um, the transiting Saturn is still, of course, going to be sextiling your Venus. Transiting Saturn squaring your natal sun. That's going to be that way for a minute. Jupiter then comes into the transiting Jupiter comes into a square with your Mercury. So it might feel like um, this is a call to action. Now at the full moon, speaking out what these changes are speaking out how you're going to be able to, how you're going to, to um, change, how you're going to expand, like find how, find your inner voice in regard this regard to this. And now it's time to really speak it into existence at the full moon. Um, Transiting Venus sextiling your Pluto. That means you're really, Oh my gosh, how beautiful is that? Right. Then, it's sextiling your, your Pluto. It's saying, yes, here's the transformation. And it's going to be okay with the restriction that Pluto has right now in Capricorn, but it, and it's going to shine and make it very beautiful on how you can do it in a loving fashion so that you feel confident in yourself and you'll feel confident outwardly. Um, Transiting Venus conjunct your Neptune. Holy cannolis. Let me find that. Here we have it in Sagittarius. Holy cats. <sighs> Venus being your home planet. Venus being all about beauty. Venus being about being able to see the beauty in everything in Sagittarius, transiting your natal Neptune, the daydreamer, the philosopher, the spiritualist. Now, I will say though, that that transit can also make you uh, view some of these expansive dreams with maybe a little bit too much sugar, a little bit too much of a rose colored glass, glasses. So I will say this, be careful. And that's where you're going to really allow um, the Saturn, your Saturn, where's your Saturn gonna be? Okay, your Saturn is gonna be training your Venus Venus is doing a lot this full moon cycle. Venus is conjunct your Neptune. 
Venus is trining your Saturn, so allowing that expansion. Venus is trining the moon, your natal moon, and Venus is sextiling your sun. Holy cat. Wow, yeah, the full moon is gonna be your time for action. I think you will have had enough time with the transiting sun squaring your, your natal sun here. I think that's gonna give you enough restriction where you're not gonna go cray cray, but that's really, so if you are thinking about expanding, changing, starting another channel, expanding on Instagram, um, anything else, I do, you know, I'm privy to some information I'm not gonna put out, but um, if this is a great spiritual time for you to expand. So it is going to be, this is a great month for you, Secret. Like, the ability, honey, to tap into all of those spiritual gifts, capabilities, motivations, messages that you've always wanted to do, open. Open. Speak these things at the full moon into existence. Release all this constriction that you've had. Release the feeling of, are people going to accept it? Is the collective going to like it? Do I, what, you know, or is it going to work? Yeah, it's going to work. You bet your bottom dollar it's going to work. Let me actually pull a moonology card. You bet your bottom bippy it's going to work. It's time, sweetie. Oh, my God. Okay, let me go back. I'm going to stop sharing because uh, this is very important. Okay, and let me go here to this screen. Oh, you got, I got all my stuff here, I apologize. Look, it's gonna show up in reverse, I'm sorry. It's time to release negativity. Holy cats, that is the full moon in Scorpio card. It is time to release negativity at the full moon. Let me read what the Moonology Oracle book says about it. Hang on one second, full moon in Scorpio. If you've been feeling paranoid and acting weird, we were just talking about that, take this card as a very direct message from the cosmos to stop it. Worrying yourself is pointless. It's time to release any negativity you have around the situation you're asking about. If someone has been unkind to you, perhaps it's time for you to release them. This card heralds an emotionally intense time since both the full moon and Scorpio themselves are both extremely intense. It's time for you to feel all your feelings. Feel them all, because we can't deal with them if we don't feel them, right? There could be some nastiness in the air when you pull this card. If that's the case, take it as a sign to move away from anyone or anything you feel is toxic. For some, however, this card has totally different meaning. Oop, your sex life can improve now. If you make an effort, Use your magic. You have all you need inside you to bring about your desired result. Attune to the moon, emote. It's all better out than in. It's time to move away from living fearfully to living joyfully. Your right to have your suspicions, if there's that. Grudges are toxic, let it go. The end of an argument. And you may be arguing with your darn self about what you should do. This is really time for you to break free. This is the time for you to not be so concerned about whether or not someone likes, dislikes, whether or not the people are going to love it or not. 
Like you need to move into your purpose because it's going to be accepted because you're going to um, send out the energies, the positive energies that are going to help that happen, right? Send, put your energy in motion towards this thing and let it be. Let it be because you are being empowered to do it right now, to release it all. Let it be. 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 So Donna, take these words of wisdom. Let it be. Honey, I mean, it couldn't be any more. So release any negativity you're feeling about this, this new next phase in your spiritual walk, in your spiritual life. Release that negativity. Don't allow it to continue. Um, release any negativity you're feeling about yourself. Let it happen. Okay? Be the most fabulous you and receive all that's coming to you and receive the expansion and the transformation and allow yourself to bloom. Okay? All right, that's what I have for you, honey. I'm so happy to have been able to serve you in this way. Um, and uh, I can't wait to see what the results are from this lunar cycle in Scorpio. Peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. I love you. Namaste. Bye-bye.